The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Something strange is happening. There is a great silence on earth today, a great silence and stillness. The whole earth keeps silence because the king is asleep. The earth trembled and is still because God has fallen asleep in the flesh and he has raised up all who have slept ever since the world began. God has died in the flesh and hell trembles with fear. He has gone to search for our first parents, as for a lost sheep, greatly desiring to visit those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death. He has gone to free from sorrow the captives, Adam and Eve, he who is both God and the son of Eve. The Lord approached them bearing the cross, the weapon that had won him the victory. At the sight of him, Adam, the first man he created, struck his breast in terror and cried out to everyone, My Lord be with you all. Christ answered him, and with your spirit. He took him by the hand and raised him up, saying, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. That reading is my very favorite reading from what's called the Office of Readings in the Liturgy of the Hours, that priests pray every day. And it's my favorite because it's so rich with symbolism. It's from yesterday, actually, on Holy Saturday. And I love that line, that hell trembles with fear. Why does hell tremble with fear? Because... God has died in the flesh. Because Christ has vanquished death, love has conquered. And there is nothing that the devil fears more than love. The victory of the cross brings love and life into the world. So how ought we respond to this? 
We respond with joy. In the preface of the Mass today that you'll hear in a little while, one of the best lines is, says that we are overcome with Paschal joy. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. So when I say Christ is risen, you say he has risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Alleluia. We get to say that word again. So what this means is that death is vanquished. And we have a lot of symbols in the Mass, especially during the Easter season. And one of those symbols, really kind of chief among them, is this candle, the Paschal candle. It's blessed at the Easter vigil. It's lit from a fire out in front of the church that we bless and is brought into the church as the solitary light entering into the darkness. It's a beautiful symbol. Pope Francis, last night in his homily, to steal a little bit from him, I, think, I don't think he'll mind, he says, seek truth, goodness, and beauty. That's what he asked people to do. In other words, seek the risen Lord, who is truth itself, goodness itself, and beauty itself. Allow the light of Christ represented by this candle, the light that enters into the darkness, penetrate your hearts and dispel the darkness within allowing the light of Christ to flood you. This Easter candle represents the light of Christ shining in a world filled with darkness and sin. It's the light of truth that enlightens our hearts, inflaming us with love. Light brings joy, the joy of the gospel. It's not a gloomy thing, but it's joyful and radiant. And we receive this light first at our baptism. Just last night, we baptized three people, Elizabeth, Stacy, and Amber. And I can tell you the joy on their faces, even when that ice cold water was poured over their heads, was amazing. They were filled with the light of Christ. Just three years ago, when I was here on my pastoral year, I have one of my clearest memories of baptism ever. And that was Clyde. Do you remember? Who knows Clyde here? I think pretty much mo most people probably know who he is. Clyde serves Mass usually at Sacred Heart, pretty much every Mass at Sacred Heart. He's a very faithful man. And Clyde was baptized and came into the church three years ago. And I remember when Clyde climbed into that baptismal pool, he kind of slipped when he got in there. People laughed. And it was just, his face just lit up. And as Father Mark poured that water over him, I saw a smile come across his face that still hasn't left. The joy of the gospel, the light of Christ, truly penetrated his heart and has remained inflamed. He shares that joy with everybody he meets. He's probably one of the most joyful people I've ever met. I don't think I've ever seen him in a bad mood. Follow Clyde's example. He's a great disciple. Proclaim this joy that you have received in your baptism to the world. At the beginning of Lent, I challenged you to shed indifference, to go outside of yourselves. We all have to do this. I have to do it. No one's perfect. But we all have to turn to the other and share that joy of the gospel with them. Don't keep it to yourself. See, fire spreads very quickly. And it engulfs whatever it comes in contact with. But we have to fuel that flame. The light that we receive at baptism is like a pilot light. Unless we give it fuel, 
it remains just a small light. But if we fuel it with the sacraments, with the Eucharist, if we fuel it with fellowship with our fellow Christians, our fellow Catholics, by coming to Mass and by hearing the Gospel and living it, if we do that, that flame grows. The apostles did this, and they set the world on fire. And oh, how Jesus wanted it to burn. The church was born out of this. And so don't let the flame in your hearts go out. It might be a small flame right now. Maybe it's a little bit bigger. Maybe it's an inferno. But don't let it go out. On November 24th, 1985, I received this candle. My mom keeps everything, thank God. It even has my name on it. And I received that flame, that pilot light. And though I wasn't raised in the faith, that flame flickered and it stayed burning. So when I was in college, when I rediscovered Christ, really, when I came back to the church, was received into full communion, that flame grew and engulfed me. And ever since, I've wanted to share this flame. I know that on Easter, there's a lot of people who come who maybe don't come to church every week. But I want you to know that you're all welcome here. This is your home. Come and fuel that flame in your heart so that you can share it with the world, so that you can spread it. Allow that flame to grow into something big. Proclaim the joy of the gospel that Jesus Christ lives, that death is conquered, that love is victorious. We have to show people that Jesus lives in us. This is the beauty of our faith. And so if you are moved by the joy of the gospel, go and share it. Make disciples of all nations. Don't let that flame go out.